know, your character, Hannah, really made me reflect on my inner struggles and things that I'm restraining myself on. Did you kind of take away from that with your character? I feel like she's, obviously, we know that she has some behavioral disorders, but at the same time, she's struggling with accepting her creativity and getting back into that. Was that a, was that a, um, a attribute that you saw within your yeah um actually my creativity is definitely something i'm secure with it's something that i couldn't live or breathe without but being okay in myself is something i'm still learning how to do so i feel like i learned uh a bit of more about my struggles i guess but they were different in the sense that it's not about my creativity i feel like i'm in uh I don't know, I kind of live and breathe creativity in a way that actually can sometimes be detrimental. But uh, yeah, I definitely learned about some of my insecurities. Absolutely. And one thing that I love about Lost Transmissions is there's so many different meanings. So Hannah loses touch with her creativity. Theo loses touch with his schizophrenia reality and also gets in touch with a princess, the princess of time. Is there ever a moment in your life where you've lost touch with something or someone and how did you regain that relationship? Yeah, that's happened, I think... A, a few times in my life and I think um, it's a pretty extraordinary thing being a human I think because I, I, I feel that we have minds that truly can create mind over matter so if you really put your mind to something I think you can bring it to life so if you lose touch with something and you really want it back then I think you really have to reach out for it and internally if you actually don't really want it it won't come to you but if you really really do and the passion is there and the the incentive is true and honest, then I think it will come back to you. And this film tackles heavy issues like homelessness and the connection that it has to mental illness. What is it like working in the industry, especially in Hollywood, where we see that that's such a prevalent issue? What was amazing is we actually got to go and film on Skid Row and work with a bunch of, of amazing humans that live down there. And some of them have minds that aren't in touch with reality that we might be in touch with, but uh, some of them are so incredible to talk to because some of them actually choose to be living there. And um, I learned a lot by working with that community and I thought it was so cool how they sort of invited us in and really, really took care of us in Skid Row. Um, I think it is a serious issue in America and I think that, especially when it comes to mental health, I think mental health really needs to start being talked about openly, honestly, and in a way that it's not... You know, we talk about other things that are wrong with us, whether we have the flu, whether we have cancer, whether we have, you know, anything that might be a problem with our bodies. And yet mental illness is still something that people do not talk about and they seem to be truly terrified of. And actually, I think if we started talking about it and learning about it, it would become a much easier world for people that have it to exist in because people would be less frightened and they'd actually be much more accepting. And the thing to remember with mental illness is that the people it is the most dangerous to is the people going through it yeah. and actually being patient and learning about it like we should with everything in in life in the world everything actually respecting other humans by learning about what their life is is the best way to be i think and then i have one last question it was a quote that stuck out to me during the scene where theo and hannah are um, kind of coming down from their trip off the shrooms and so uh he says as soon as you let yourself feel then the real you can just be you without your head getting in the way well how does that make you feel and what did you feel when you read that in the script I mean, this whole script read very honest to me, which was amazing because when I sat down with Catherine and it had come from such a personal experience for her that it was, I, and I really felt that on the page. I think that quote is um, kind of like shooting a bow and arrow through someone's heart. It, I think it's very true and I think it's something that we're all nervous to do, um, to really kind of follow our feelings without, you know, either putting a wall up or closing things off or... Uh, I don't know, even fully like swimming in them, you know? I think we dip our toes in them, but actually fully diving and jumping in and swimming in that feeling pool is quite terrifying. But I think it makes us a more enlightened person if we decide to go for it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations. You did a great job. You know what's funny is that scene really spoke to me. So when the friends are all crowding around trying to decide what they're going to do with Theo, it made me think about how the world kind of looks at mental illness as a whole. Like, who's going to deal with it? Am I going to deal with it this time? Um, what were your thoughts uh, with just writing the film, and was there any scene that was actually something that happened in real life? Yeah, it, it was. It was one of the scenes that was based on real life, 
um, it's really, you know, she was a, a, a creation of, you know, an amalgamation of a lot of different people's experiences, but a lot of the stuff that happened in the first act was drawn from experiences that I had, it, particularly a scene um, in the hospital uh, when there's the camera kind of goes back and forth in this sort of trap of like circular logic when she's trying to reason with him. Um, but it, yeah, it was something that affected a, a large group of friends and, um, you know, we all learned a lot about, you know, how difficult it is to communicate with somebody who's going through that situation. I, we learned a lot about the revolving door of the mental health care system as, you know, and what it takes and how difficult it is to help somebody who really needs help but um, d doesn't think that they do themselves. So it's really impossible to get them committed to a hospital. So. It was um, a story I wanted to tell from the friend's perspective so that we could have a clearer view of what's really going on. Because otherwise you're sort of seeing things from a, you're only seeing the fantastical delusions. So it was, um, that was, you know, really the aim of telling the rootingness in Juno Temple's character, Hannah's perspective. And I love how you've intertwined how mental illness is greatly connected to the homelessness issue. Um, when you stay, you are part of the industry, and we're in Hollywood right now, where you see that it's a very prevalent issue. What does that make you feel like putting together a film like this that tackles a heavy issue? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because a lot of people, especially when we bring the film to festivals around the world, they're like, "It doesn't look like LA from the movies," and I'm like, "No, it's not." But if you live in LA and you're driving through the streets, you know, you know, it's a lot of uh, strip malls, billboards, and homeless encampments. Right. And, um, you know, when I was there, they were, the amount of encampments were just, it was skyrocketing at the time I was going through this with my friend and I was driving past them every day. And it just connected the dots for me. I realized like how easy it was for him to fall through the cracks and I realized all the other people were, you know, probably had gone through similar situations. So um, that was really important uh, for me that people might walk away from this film and say, like, you know, next time they might pass somebody on the street, realize that they're really just somebody in need and help. And, you know, I think a lot of us experience that that person is usually yelling at the sky or, you know, it's very obvious when you think about it. But for some reason there's, you know, there's a, there's a disconnect. Absolutely. And one uh, last question. I love the title, Lost Transmissions. I feel like there's so many different meanings. Um, Hannah loses her loss of connection with her creativity. Theo loses his connection with reality and also the princess of time. Um, is there ever a moment in your life where you've lost touch with something or someone, and how did you regain that relationship? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. My grandmother's schizophrenic. I feel like I never, I think we never really truly landed with her. Um, I think in general, that's, you know, the impetus for that, that title came from when I was thinking about two people, and we're all in these mental wavelengths, and sometimes they're just missing each other, and you just send them out into the ether, and they might not land anywhere. Um, so that was, that's really where it came from. Um, but, and I think that we're kind of doing that constantly in the way that we try to talk to each other, the way that we might be suffering alone. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really a story about, you know, sharing your story with people. Um, these are two characters that are open and sharing with each other, and that's what you really need to help somebody. Thank you. Literally, I have so many questions for you, but I, no, no, I know. Yeah, like it's a so well written, like so really good. Like I literally watched it twice. Like it's no, it's it's so good. But congratulations. Where is the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said was mine. Where is the buzz?